I love diving, but my feet get all screwed up because of that rhinoid syndrome. Uh, the blood shifts from your extremities into your core. And uh, when your body thaws out, all that blood rushes back in. And my feet do some crazy things. They're so itchy and painful. Uh, but they'll feel better in a few minutes. How's it going, everybody? I am here. Gonna do some diving in the ocean off a boat. Nice treat. Uh, we were gonna meet up with Tom here to do a shore dive, but he decided to put his boat in the water. He's been traveling all over the world and uh, he hasn't put it in for a while, so uh, not good to have an engine set for too long. Mon Kun and Brian came over with me last night, as well as Jasmine and the kids. I'm uh, meeting up with uh, Tom right now and Eric also uh, came and we picked up Alex. So we got an awesome crew. Visibility is looking stellar. We're gonna look around for crabs, seafood, rockfish. Not that we can shoot them, but we can still visually see them and enjoy their presence in the water. And uh, I'm gonna look for some greenling because again, my ceviche supply is low. I didn't catch any last time I came out here. Uh, it's gonna be a really, really fun time. I'm stoked to get out here again. And then we're diving to New Spade tomorrow. So uh, even after today, diving's not done. Uh, but Tom's waiting for us, he's putting around, so uh, we'll make our way to his boat right now. Shout out to Tom for always being down to get out and for saving the day by bringing his boat. Despite checking the current and planning the dive out accordingly, it was still ripping. Without a boat, we would have been stuck within the boundaries of the bay. Off camera, anchoring the boat with a strong wind and current proved to be a challenge. But after repeated attempts, the anchor stuck and we were all able to jump in. Though the current and weather was not on our side, at least the visibility was. It was some of the best I've seen in a while. It didn't take too long to start seeing all the usual suspects. After a quick warm up, I turned my camera around and loaded the gun. My goal was to shoot my greenling nice and quick so I could get back to free diving. Harvesting your own seafood is rewarding, but at the end of the day, it's still work. I prefer to enjoy the ocean without a loaded gun in my hand. Despite having clear visibility, the water was still dark due to the gloomy sky above. I thought finding my three greenling was going to be a breeze, but it was taking me much longer than I anticipated. I guess I shouldn't be complaining, I mean, I still have it better than the fish I'm targeting. It's a little mold, yeah, a little yeah, shell. The spot one was good, but we're gonna check out another spot. I got a two green link at this one. I gotta probably shoot one more. The wind is up and the current's really strong, so I'm trying to find a spot to anchor. It's been a struggle. Uh, so we're gonna go across the strait here and uh, see what we can find underwater. The morale was high with everyone on board. Brian shot his first fish ever, and he was beyond stoked. It was already a trip to remember. I was pretty keen on shooting one more greenling, but I kept seeing cool stuff, and a spear gun in frame ruins all the footage in my opinion. So I gave up, switched my camera around again, and went back into naturalist mode. All these perch were a nice sight. Same with this copper and cool back rockfish. Or is this guy copper? Hard to tell with this one. After exhausting the small back eddy, we set course for one last spot. I love how everything is two-dimensional from the surface, but the further you descend, all the structure starts to emerge and a 3D landscape is revealed. The last spot was the best, but the good diving started around 15 meters and we were all pretty bagged at this point. In the world of free diving, saving the best for last doesn't really work too well. In terms of safety, deep diving on your last legs isn't advisable, and in terms of your breath hold, it's going to be reduced. Before calling it a dive, I took a page out of Aquatic Monkey's book and found a cell phone. Despite being in shallow water, it failed to work. I also grabbed a few seafood snacks for the cocoa we had planned for that evening. Wrapping up the day, that was a fun time. Just uh, crushed a hot shower. Can't beat that after a dive. My feet were going all wonky and painful, but um, the blood's back in them now and I can feel them and uh, nice and relaxed. Uh, thanks, Tom, for bringing your boat out. Uh, Tom is a fisherman, and he's going to hook everybody up with some uh, sable fish, some smoked sable fish. So we're going to swing a, swing by his place on the way back. How uh, much appreciated, man. I'm going to go back to my place and uh, have a nice cookout. We're going to have some green links of ceviche. We got some sea urchin. I grabbed a couple sea cucumber. 
I'm gonna try that in the ceviche as well. Uh, shout out to Waterman Surin. He tried that as well. He said it's pretty tasty. It's gonna be a fun day, fun evening. Uh, and then tomorrow, Nunu's probably uh, dive a more traditional spot close to home. Be a bit more of a relaxed day. We're in the water for three hours somehow today. Three full hours in the ocean in February. Uh, but thank God for an open salt wetsuit because we dove comfortably the whole entire time. All right, two hour drive ahead of us uh, back to Nanaimo and uh, need some food in my belly. I grab a coffee on the way back too. Yeah, so there's a couple of halibut there. Okay. That's just cold smoked black cod. Yeah. It's unreal. And this stuff that looks like that is candy. Wicked, then you caught this stuff? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Cheers, man. Oh, okay. I'll throw that in there. I brought you a present. Oh, look at the bounty. She loves it. Zai's like, what's it? What else do we got there, Sailor? This. Yeah. Fish. Fish, fish. That's not any fish, that's a greenling. It's a greenling, it's not Linkod, it's a greenling. Uh, ceviche tonight? That's like the smallest one I've ever seen. Right, isn't that cute? It's a Puget Sound Kings Cruise. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. 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 Crab shell, pizza sand king crab. What you making there, Jasmine? Ceviche. Uh, yummy, delicious ceviche. What do you got going on, man? I am seasoning some green ling fillet and then um, making some coconut crusted fry up. Nice. And then I've got uh, piece of bear meat there as well. And that's uh, self caught, eh? Yeah. Caught not bought. Uh, everything's caught not bought. No doubt. I might try that actually. So I know. I'm glad I can convince you to eat the meat. It's possible, man. We'll see. We'll see. The smoked link good. Uh, thanks to Alex. Yeah. He cut this and uh, man, that's good. Just put some garlic. Those are garlic. Just fry it first and then I add in boiling water. What you doing, man? I'm playing Scrabble. Scrabble? With uh, green lane? Yeah, I think it's uh, gray lane and we're making some uh, battered fish. And uh, we'll be going in the tacos. I'm not sure. We'll have to ask the chef. Yeah. Chef Boyer Moncun, I said that last time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. These cookouts are so much fun. I wish I had a bigger place as I'd extend a larger invite. We had 14 people over, so we had already reached capacity. So I stopped eating meat in 2018. I haven't eaten any since. I made one exception. I had a French onion soup and that was made from beef broth. Yeah. Other than that, I felt true, but Brian caught this bear. I've never tried bear. I've had moose before. Uh, he caught it himself sustainably. I know where it came from. So I'm making an exception and I'm gonna try this piece of bear meat. So uh, here we go. It was 2018. That was almost five years ago. It's good. Tastes like bear. It's actually really, really good. It reminds me of steak. Not that I missed steak, but bear. Black bear. Try this moose too. This moose is really good. I've tried moose once before and that was in Nova Scotia. Uh, my buddy uh, shot one and I was uh, back east visiting and cooked it up. It's really good. I'd hunt if I could afford it and had the time to do it, but I got too many hobbies on my plate. Um, but yeah, I just don't want to buy the stuff that's in the store because I don't support industrial farming. So this right here is a fish head soup or at least fish head stock. And give that a try. Monku just prepared this. That's good, Ben. It's yeah, good. yeah, you can make a good uh, soup out of that or something. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. That Vegetable, is, uh, vegetables in there, man, that'd be delicious. Yeah. Yummy. All right, so we, we slept in and we're waking up right now. Our plan is to drive out to Nunus Bay. The currents are gonna behave, the visibility is gonna be good. We're gonna get a mid morning start. Uh, feeling a bit tired from yesterday. I can do some harvesting, uh, see some lingcod egg masses, good spot for octopus, and uh, this time of year there might be some sea lions swimming by us. We're not going out there trying to swim with them, it's just one of the necessary evils to dive into new Uh But we're going to have a fun time and get in the ocean and have a fun time. I didn't say that, did I? I think that's the first time I've ever said that. Right, Zai? Right? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Any entire dive gear times two. Yeah, times and two. Uh, you guys going to the ferries right after this? Yeah. Cool. You guys ready? Yeah. Bit of patter. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
keep all the scraps in my deep freezer and uh, try to dump it back into the ocean. Uh, it also works good if you're trying to get some crabs out of the sand. Uh, just throw a pile of carcasses on the bottom of the ocean. Uh, swim around, look for crab, and when you're done, uh, come back and scout around that area. You usually find some. Uh, today, we're not diving in an area where we're gonna see a bunch of crab, but still might bring out some life. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we'll see something cool. We just got here and the conditions look amazing. You know, flat calm, glassy water. It's a bit of a drizzle right now, but not too bad. Visibility here looks awesome too. I love this spot. It's a local one in a, in a new Bay. Uh, one of my favorites uh, in this area for that matter. Last time I was here, I saw a wolf eel. So I'm gonna see if he's still living in the same crevice. Maybe, maybe not. Oh man, can't ask for better conditions than this for this spot. Um, the current's gonna behave too. Didn't check the current till last second and uh, ended up working in our favor. So ideally when you harvest, you're using as much of the meat as you can, but obviously there's gonna be some waste and it's best to put it back into the ocean where future animals can chow down on this stuff. What I'm gonna start doing is uh, scraping all the meat off the bones and using that for a ceviche. So uh, going forward, there'll be even less waste because I'm sure I could have got some meat off that. That would have made a nice meal for sure. You excited, Brian? You excited? Oh, yeah. Careful. Woo! I grabbed you. Oh, you saved me. Yeah. You saved my life, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that here. Oh, what a bit of dive out there. How's it look? That just about happened to me. Good viz? Woo! We got good viz, man. We got good viz. I'm stoked. That's sick. It's fine, man. Uh, no toes. No, no feet. The water may be colder, but I love winter diving. Cover that up and a buzz bomb. Oh, nice. Visibility like this must not be taken for granted. Just as suspected, we had some sea lions come bomb us, but after a quick hello, they kept moving along. Check this fish out in a few seconds towards the top of the screen. I think it's a decorated war bonnet, but I'm not sure. I didn't notice it until I reviewed the footage. Note to self, slow it down a bit, Chris. You're missing some sweet action. I didn't find that wolf eel, but I got these two clips of the elusive tiger rockfish. These guys can live to 166 years of age. Crazy. Male link cod were out in full force, defending their egg masses. Without them present, their eggs would be consumed within hours. Good luck, my friend. This clip hurts me a little inside. I was so focused on the link cod, I completely missed that heart crab on the ledge. At least I caught it on camera, I suppose. Link cod can deposit up to half a million eggs in one nest. If even a small fraction survive, that's still a substantial number. This dive kept getting better and better. I spotted my first sun star here too. Hopefully kelp beds reappear one day as well. Egg mass after egg mass, awesome. I wonder if fish and marine mammals talk to each other about the epic visibility and all the humans they've seen on their outings. I mean, we're fascinated by them. I wonder if it's a two-way street. Garrett joined for this one too. Don't forget to check out his YouTube channel. I noticed this egg mass was under attack by some hungry urchin, so I took matters into my own hands and gave this link cod a helping hand. One could argue that I should just let nature take its course, but link cod populations are in decline and sea urchin populations are exploding. So I think I made the right call. And I think that link cod would agree. Alex spotted and pointed out a cabazon to me. It was the first one I've seen at this spot and some of the best cabazon footage I've captured to date. Thanks for the 411, Alex. On a negative, we did find loads of fishing gear scattered all over the reef. Turns out cannonballs make great urchin smashers though, so there's that. Swimming with a cannonball proved to be tough, so I borrowed a technique used by sea otters and I failed miserably. Won't be doing that again.
That was an awesome time in the water. That was one of my better dives in a while for that matter. Uh, very unexpected. I love this spot though, so maybe not that unexpected. Didn't find that wolf eel, but I saw a tiger rockfish. I've only seen one once before, and that was here, probably uh, two, maybe three years ago. Uh, but I got two nice shots, I think, of that one that I saw, so really pumped. Uh, a lot of link caught out, guarding their egg masses. I uh, saw some sea lions swimming up to us. It's important to give our, uh, give them their space. We don't want to habituate them, nor do we want to uh, uh, irritate the Department of Fisheries and Oceans. So you see them in the water, just uh, let them swim by and uh, yeah, let them do their thing, be in the ocean, being aquatic mammals. Oh man, good times. I'm gonna drop uh, Brian and Monk Woon off at the ferries now. And tomorrow I got first material shipment. Uh, for my renovation that I'm starting. Pretty pumped on that too, pretty excited. Gonna put a little suite in my house and uh, yeah, hopefully do uh, some cool dive trips with people in the future. Uh, more on that uh, uh, down the road. Uh, but thanks for watching, actually, I say thanks for watching like I'm signing off. Who knows, I'll probably uh, have some more footage throughout the next day or two. I don't think I'll dive tomorrow, but maybe uh, show everybody what my plans are. We shall see. All right, gonna go warm up because I'm cold. So we're just uh, ending the dive here. And look at that purple sea glass. Uh, you don't see purple, that's like a rare color. I think I've only found maybe two or three pieces in total. Uh, cool.